On this episode of Treasure Expeditions, I discuss a violent train robbery, a shop robbery, and then gold rumored to be lost in Colorado from a, a different train robbery, and a man known to be a gangster, but who was also known to ranch in Sedalia, Colorado. I stopped into the Castle Rock Museum to find out more about local outlaws. The director, Angie DeLeo, lets us know where it's located. It's the Castle Rock Museum, located at 420 Elbert Street in Castle Rock. The director explains more about Diamond Jack, whose job as an enforcer meant he made people swim with the fishes. Well, Diamond Jack was a gangster from Chicago. He uh, was part of a gang, it's called the Albanian Gang. Um, they were part of the uh, bootleg wars in Chicago. So his boss was Obanian and Jack Altieri was his name, um, was kind of the enforcer. In other words, he would bump people off. <laughs> um, so um, he, he liked the West though. He liked that whole idea of the 10 gallon hat and the six shooters and whatnot. So um, he actually bought a ranch, 4,000 acres outside of Sedalia off of Highway 67, just west of the town of Sedalia. And he made friends with the local people there. And um, so the, the picture I think that you have has um, him talking to some neighbors, the Penleys, and um, he invited some of his friends from Chicago to come out too. Um, but he, he just liked the Western lifestyle. And uh, eventually he decided he'd like to be in the movie business and he went over to the western slope of Colorado and try, tried to get himself involved in that. Um, but he couldn't quite leave his life of crime behind and uh, he was caught by the FBI and they told him that he would either go to prison or he had to testify against someone. So he decided to testify and then um, after he did that, he was killed in Chicago. Diamond Jack is pictured wearing a cowboy hat standing in the middle. Diamond Jack's alias is likely from his love for something sparkly. He loved diamonds and so he wore a lot of them. He uh, had uh, diamond rings and uh, other diamond paraphernalia. In fact, uh, one time he was asked to be arrested, I mean the FBI asked for the local sheriff to arrest him and he went up there, um, the local sheriff Royal McKinster, and arrested him. But it was a friendly thing and so um, Diamond Jack was kind of pleased the way he was treated and actually gave him a gold badge, gold star badge that he made for him. The Leo talks about the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. Well, originally when the train came through, there wasn't a depot here, um, but in 1874, Castle Rock became the county seat, and then the local f f um, people said, we have to have a depot here, because it's gonna be the government center, and um, they had to negotiate with William Jackson Palmer, who was the builder of the railroad, and eventually they came to an agreement to build the, the depot. The director explains more. Denver Rio Grande Depot is uh, in Castle Rock at 3rd and Perry Streets next to the tracks. Today um, the local fire station is right in front of that same area. Is it here? Is this it? This is well this was moved from that location. so. Uh, and we do have pictures of that downstairs if you'd like, like to see how they picked up this building all in one piece at 150 tons and moved it here. <laughs> the director talks about a crime involving the railroad. The train came through in 1871 and then the depot was built in 1875 and we have a little graffiti on that on the wall right inside the depot here so you might, if you want to take a picture of that. Um, it closed in 1965. A local couple bought it and uh, for $25, 
but the condition was that they had to move it. So that was the additional expense. They moved it here. And then when they left town, they sold it to the Historical Society that created the museum. Express mes messenger on the train, he worked for the Globe Express, which is something like the Railway Express, um, was found murdered when the train got to Denver. And the speculation was that the robbers got on in an area of Castle Rock and, um, and killed him um, before Littleton, and that's where they got off. Um, the poor fella, Charles Wright, wasn't found until um, the train got to Denver when um, the express agent was supposed to open the door, but he didn't, and so they had to break in to find him dead on the floor. Um, so there's speculation about whether there were one or two robbers, um, because they felt like um, there was only one little pole where somebody could stand on the side of the train and hang on, um, and then break the window to get inside. Um, but other people speculated that there were two and that the people who did it knew something about how the train operated. So it's sort of an inside job is what they speculated. Um, they really didn't have a lot of clues to go on and I don't think anyone has ever found for that. What they wanted to do was that there were s safes on that express um, car and they speculate that the uh, express agent refused to open the safe and then they killed him. There were, um, so eventually they only got maybe three or four hundred dollars because the, the major safe uh, wasn't opened. The museum director suggests the murder was gruesome. It was pretty serious because they said that they found powder burns on his face so the, the gun had to be pretty close to him when they shot him, but they didn't have the forensics in 1908 that they have today um, to do more about trying to figure out, you know, I don't know if, if there were fingerprints or anything like that, but, but uh, they were not able to, uh, to track down the one or two robbers. From train robberies to a store robbery. There was a local man who um, owned a little liquor store here in town. His name was Henry Enderud. Um, and just a little start of that, the, um, there were three criminals, I guess, in Denver. Um, one was a 16-year-old from New York, and then two other fellows who were 21 and 22 years old. And um, one had enough money to get his bail and get out. The other one didn't. So they, the two that were out, the young fella, the teenager and the 21-year-old, decided that they would uh, try to get some money. Well, the fella from New York said that he knew how to steal cars. So they stole a car and they came down to Castle Rock and they saw that the liquor store was open and they went in to rob it to get the money to get the third person out of jail. Um, the fellow um, kind of pistol whipped Mr. Henry Enerud and um, he took all his the money out of the um, cash drawer and uh, even took his wallet and um, threatened him several times with killing him. Eventually he decided not to. So um, the two fellas took the money and uh, started driving south toward Colorado Springs. They were driving fast and erratically and a local state trooper uh, noticed them and uh, did a U-turn and started following them and stopped them. And uh, so the 16-year-old the was driving, the guy with the gun was the passenger. He got out and went behind the state trooper and killed him. And so it 
took several days until they uh, caught up with them in a hotel in uh, Colorado Springs, but those two were arrested. According to Colorado's lost gold mines and buried treasure, there's a legend outlaws robbed a train in the 1870s. The bandits are rumored to have escaped with $60,000 in gold eagles. I think I just told you that one about somebody burying loot up in the mountains and uh, supposedly jabbing a knife into the tree. According to Colorado's Lost Gold Mine and Buried Treasures, there's a legend about outlaws robbing a train in the 1870s. During a posse, the outlaws buried $60,000 in gold eagles. The outlaws marked the site by sticking a knife in a tall tree. In 1923, a forester approached a man in the area of Devil's Head. The forester asked him what he was doing. The outlaw said he was searching. He explained he was one of the outlaws who had taken the gold, and he was looking for the loot. The forester said the landscape changed after a blaze. There's a rumor someone discovered $20,000 in gold eagles in the Devil's Head area, but all or some of the treasure may remain missing. The Castle Rock Museum Administrative Assistant, Claudine Phibbs, says there's another legend of interest. Hangman guilt is basically a legend around here. We're not sure if these things are all true, but they're a very good story. So back in 1867, there was supposed to be um, a couple of bad guys out and about, and they stopped at a homesteader's place um, near Castle Rock. And some other people had seen them come through and knew that they were there. And then they went and moved on. And a neighbor of the homesteader that they had stayed with uh, went to check on the homesteader and found him dead. So he knew that it was probably those two guys that came through town. So he immediately got the authorities and they put together a posse and they set out and they started heading south and they ended up um, a little past Monument where they finally caught up with the guys and they had some property from the homesteader so they were pretty sure they had the right guys. So they, you know, arrested them and started heading back towards Castle Rock. Well, one of the bad guys um, started mouthing off and getting everybody um, upset. So they just stopped and they hung him right there on from a tree. And they left him there and they moved on because they wanted to leave him as a deterrent for other people coming through. So then they keep coming through Castle Rock and they get a little bit north and they decided that's where they were going to hold the trial for the second guy. So they have a little impromptu trial, find him guilty, and once again hung him from a little tree that was there. But this time they did take him down and they buried him in um, the kind of the edge of the gulch that was there. And then everything was done and they went on. Years go by and the water and everything kind of eroded the gulch and the bones um, became visible. So locals found it and it was basically an intact skeleton. So one guy took it to Denver and had him put it together and then he donated it to the high school here in Castle Rock. So supposedly for many years they were using that to um, study biology and everything um, with this criminal's skeleton. And then um, the high school burned down. And there's two stories that one Somebody ran in and saved the skeleton, but more than likely the story that it did burn down with the high school. Um, and all this came from a gentleman who was three years old when he moved here with his parents and he would listen to the stories of the people around um, and they were the ones who were part of the posse and did all this and so he got the story from them and then he would pass the story down to everybody else. So we've never been able to verify any of this information, but it's one of the great stories. In conclusion, I covered a legend of lost loot at Devil's Head in Colorado and a story about gangster Diamond Jack's ranching days. Remember, the greatest treasures are the memories along the way.